Thank you, gentlemen. The gentlewoman from California, Ms. Lofkin, is recognized for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And before asking my questions, um, since I represent Silicon Valley, it would not be right for me to address anybody from the PTO without saying, how is it going on the selection of our next uh, patent office? <laughs> We are actively working on the identification of our additional satellite offices. As and you know, a quarter of all the patents in the country come from Silicon Valley. And they have great weather. They do have. It's 71 degrees in San Jose today. I, um, <laughs> I just wanted to uh, first thank you for being here and uh, express a couple of concerns and then really get into a question. We've seen ACTA kind of explode over in Europe, I don't think it's going to go anywhere. And I think one of the reasons why is the perceived lack of transparency in the negotiation of that matter. What, whether or not that's correct, that's the perception. Um, and I think the TPP uh, uh, is also being negotiated uh, confidentially. And my belief is that because of the lack of transparency, TPP is quite likely to suffer the same fate as, as ACTA. And so here is the question. I mean, we had a leaked version of, ACTA, of the TPP in, in May, and it seemed to indicate if that was accurate, I don't know, I really should sit down in a closed session and find out, that the uh, U.S. is really seeking to transport enforcement of our EP, uh, IP laws but I didn't find the exceptions and safeguards like fair use uh, that we enjoy in this country. So the concern in question is whether uh, under the treaty people would have the same freedom uh, as they would in the United States vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, copyright. And, and going to the WIPO issue on, and I know that you've taken a, an important role and that's proper that the U.S. should play an important role with WIPO, the moral rights issue that has been extended does not appear to have the same kind of uh, fair use exceptions that we find in, in U.S. copyright law. And as you're aware, um, it's quite common now, especially for young people, to do mashups and, and other uh, manipulations of other documents that has generally been uh, seen as protected under U.S. law. So here's the question in both uh, I, uh, the um, TPP as well as the WIPO provisions, are we just exporting enforcement and not rights? Uh, and, and what can we do to make this a more transparent process? Because to, to work hard, I know you do work hard, and have uh, a measure that may have merit in some regards absolutely just blow up because of suspicion is really uh, not a positive thing. Okay. Thank you. Um, I can tell you I have not seen the most recent TPP draft because I do a great deal of reading, but that one didn't make it to the top of my pile. Okay. Um, but I can tell you that we do look at rights as well as enforcement. And as to the transparency issue, um, I can get back to my colleagues and get back to you on that because I don't know why things mechanistically or procedurally were handled that way, if it's just tradition or in the past, maybe we should reconsider or relook at it. I am not familiar with why it's handled in a certain way, so maybe we can get back to you on that issue. Could we do that? Maybe I can make an appointment with you offline and talk about this issue. I know it's not entirely up to, to you. It's the trade representative. Maybe we should pull him into this discussion as well, because I think it's a severe concern in the United States and really internationally. And just a final note on the issue raised by um, Mr. Berman, I want to give him tremendous credit uh, for his position, not only in this committee, but also uh, Foreign Affairs for uh, leading up an investigation on the WIPO. I just think it's an outrage, really, it's an outrage that WIPO would be transferring material violating the sanctions that we have to North Korea and Iran. And this stuff, I mean, it's basically, it's funded by U.S. inventors. So yeah, you're right, it's the State Department, but the American, I think if American inventors knew that their funding was being used to send firewalls and other material to Iran and to, um, to North Korea, 
they'd be furious. And I'd like to say I'm furious. So I, I hope that the uh, PTO will be more uh, vigorous publicly in, in the concern about this. Uh, certainly, I intend to be, and Mr. Berman has shown tremendous leadership in this, um, but I think it's something that merits our uh, loud objection and insistence on correction. With that, my time is uh, up, and I yield back, Mr. Chairman.